the FDA's new dietary ingredient guidance, we're already under the food fascism bill, if enforced, will cause as many as 40 to 50 percent of dietary supplements now on the market to be illegal to sell, folks, and will produce over 100,000 new job losses. The unemployed ranks will take another big hit. This is uh, more insanity. What's the latest on this? Well, uh, for decades now, the FDA has attempted to either transform dietary supplements into drugs which cannot lawfully be sold at a certain uh, dose level or has tried to call them unapproved food additives uh, by calling the ingredients in a supplement a food additive and Uh the supplement itself a food and these things failed because they were such overt attempts to take supplements off the market. FDA has hit the jackpot for the drug industry in eliminating supplements as a source of competition by uh, attacking them on, under the guise of protecting public health and safety. And uh, this new dietary ingredient guidance is a very clever, very evil and profoundly devastating uh, instrument. Uh, What they did was, rather than go through the rulemaking process, they announced an interpretation, as if it were always this way, of a provision in the law that says that if something is a new dietary ingredient, Mm -hmm. it may not lawfully be sold in a dietary supplement. this provision was put into the law in the Dietary Supplement Health and Education Act. It, among other provisions in that act, I opposed at the time uh, in a meeting with uh, uh, Patricia Knight, uh, uh, Senator Hatch's aide, and I was one out of, I think, uh, 15 lawyers in the room who took the position that the bill had defects and had to be changed or it would harm people. Everybody else was, well, this is marvelous. And this provision was one that I attacked. And here's here's what's happening. Exactly what we thought might happen is happening. They have redefined what a new dietary ingredient is by saying that any uh, innovation in uh, production of a dietary supplement after uh, uh, October of 1994 uh-huh. is makes it an unapproved new dietary ingredient. So, for example, if you sold a dietary ingredient that was derived from a ripe fruit and instead you use an unripe fruit, if you use a method of extraction that's other than water or simple alcohol to take nutrients out of plants, if you uh, cook a substance in order to reduce a bacterial load. Simply cook it. That's all. Just raise the temperature, that's it. Okay. Anything that is in any way really a deviation in the method of production, any innovation whatsoever uh, after 1994 causes the nutrient in question to be a new dietary ingredient. If you use nanotechnology, as broadly defined as that term can be, uh, any method renders it a new dietary ingredient. Now, here's the real kicker. We had uh, uh, Professor uh, Joanna uh, Shepard Bailey, uh, who's a professor of law and economics at Emory University and an expert in in evaluating the economic impact of regulation, assess uh, this new dietary ingredient guidance for its economic impact. She determined Mm -hmm. that this would affect uh, roughly half of all dietary supplements in the market would be rendered new dietary ingredients if this is enforced, and that would cause them to have to be removed from the market. In addition, it would result in over 100,000 people in the market, uh, uh, in the business, in this business, to lose their jobs, and it would increase the cost of the remaining dietary supplements, and obviously dramatically decrease the opportunities people have in the market. Now, this is going to happen. In fact, it's happening right now, and uh, companies all over the United States are determining what they're going to do. To comply with this thing and file the science, uh, simply filing the science the FDA requires to make products that are already on the market, safely consumed, approvable by FDA, um, is, 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 it ranges from about $145 million a product to $6.6 billion. 
So hmm. most companies simply cannot, in this industry, cannot afford to make the filing that FDA is requiring. Got it. Mm-hmm. They're gone. Mm-hmm. So it, 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 this, is, this is going to exacerbate unemployment, harm public health, uh, really do a number on us. But it, one, thing, one, one party that uh, controls the FDA is going to benefit magnificently from this, and that's the drug industry. They, it's going to make self-help through better eating and living no. uh, disabled in this country. Right. Okay. Now, how close is this to happening? Can it's they, happening now. It's already can happening. They, okay. Can, if they, a lot of things on the books which aren't enforced, if they begin to enforce this, how do we legally fight back? Well, we are doing that very thing right now. We, uh, there's a group called the Alliance for Natural Health. You can go to their website at anhusa.org, I think. And um, that group has put together uh, a large number of consumers and professionals and others to fight this, and they've hired us to fight it. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're, we're going to submit new dietary ingredient petitions to cause to force the FDA to act, and then that will give us standing to sue them when they deny very basic substances that are entirely innocuous and safe approval under this new uh, guidance. And so we will attack the guidance that way. They've chosen this guidance methodology uh-huh. because it is a, a, a really evil way of accepting uh, law from review. A guidance is said not to be a final rule. It is, is said not to be binding. Mm-hmm. In point of fact, mm-hmm. it is binding because on a case-by-case basis, FDA follows it to a T and forces out of existence parties. Once they've achieved that in a number of cases, they have precedent, regulatory precedent. I see. And uh, the courts largely defer to them. So we're going to take them on on this, uh, and within the year we'll be we'll be battling them. Good. Uh, but it, it, yeah. it, it, the tragedy is that uh, so many people are going to lose their their jobs, and so many people that are dependent upon dietary supplements well, are, are going to have to lose them. Jonathan, will this happen before this is litigated? Is that what you're saying? Yes, uh, the litigation will take place as soon as possible. Uh-huh. Uh huh. But even that will be a year away before the foundation for it is... Well, I'm just pondering what Jonathan E. Mort has been talking about. It doesn't get any more underhanded, any more despicable, any more evil. We have birthright. You call them God-given rights, call them whatever you want. They're birthrights. And one of our birthrights as a living, sentient being is to choose what we put in our bodies. These alleged people are taking that away. And make it, making it simply prohibitive in terms of expense, uh, the whole issue of having to go to a doctor to get a prescription for, I think in Europe you can't get more than 50 milligrams of vitamin C in most countries without a prescription from a doctor. Uh, this is as ugly as it gets, folks. Uh, one question before we continue How big is the supplement industry in this country? Now, what you're doing in taking the lead is heroic, you and your law firm. But is not the supplement industry big enough and strong enough to mount a real serious challenge to this at some level? Now, you're going to do, obviously, everything humanly possible. And I hope you're getting the support of some of these corporations because some of them are very big and and doing quite well. In fact, over 50 cents on the dollar, I don't know what the amount is, but more than half is spent by Americans on so-called alternative health and alternative health protocols. Go ahead, please. Well, um, this industry, by comparison to the drug industry, is, is minuscule. And, but the amount of money that people put in, as you point out, into alternative medicine and to uh, self-help and care through supplements... Uh, it, it is a, it is a large and growing marketplace. Right, I right. mean, it's hundreds of billions of dollars. Well, let's say we take uh, you know one percent, all right, and channel it into your your law firm or whatever uh, to help. I mean, they, they, these people have got to get with it. The consumers have to get with it if they're 
if they're supporting their freedoms, they're going to have to, I'll pay an extra 1%. For me, I'd pay an extra 5%. I wouldn't bat an eye. wouldn't bother me at all to fight this. The big problem, which has been a problem in this industry since, a, since about the last uh, decade, is that industry players, companies that are in this industry, are still operating on the notion that led them stupidly to favor the good manufacturing practice regulations of the FDA uh -huh. on, the, on the supposition that even though the FDA has this power, it will, if they play their cards right individually, not destroy their company. In other words, if you, if you uh, do what the, the regulators want you to do, they're going to leave you alone. You That's can't appease tyrants. It doesn't work. No, it's, it's a bit like being in Nazi Germany and uh, uh, being a Jew and thinking that, uh, gee, if, if I don't flee and if instead I simply wear this badge and uh, bow, bow my head and take the kicks and the, and the, from the, the jackbooted thugs, and I, they, I, that I will somehow survive uh, the, 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 the fascist regime. Well, unfortunately, the FDA is the, going the, to, you know, the the send these folks to the concentration camps, and they really right, are. Right, right. The fascists and jackboots are here. And in many ways, they've actually outstripped the Nazis and uh, done at least equally as well as the uh, Bolshevik killers. I mean, they, they're not executing people en masse yet, but uh, they're going to do it by the slow burn, it looks like. And that means taking away your right to nutrition upon which your body depends to maintain its relative freedom from disease and conditions of poor health. 